Welcome to the last presentation of, of the day. Uh, we will talk about VZLU SAT2, which is a CubeSAT with two Linux payload computers on board. Uh, I'm Tomáš Novotný, uh, and here's Martin Sabol. I'm working uh, mainly on uh, Linux stuff in our research institute, and Martin is working on uh, space hardware and operating of the satellites. And we are both from Czech Aerospace Research Center. So we will talk, we will start with the, with the introduction, so we will have uh, the context, and we will focus mainly on VZLU SAT too. In our presentation, we will talk about its hardware, we will we'll briefly talk about the software, and we will spend some time on, on the operating of the satellite. Uh, there will be question at the end of the, on, at the, of the session. And what should you know after this, uh, what should you take from that uh, presentation? Uh, you should uh, know what are the uh, specifics of the commercial of the shelf components used in space, especially with uh, Linux computers, uh, how the Linux operate, uh, how the Linux compu computer may be operated in space, and we will talk uh, uh, about all our future plans as well. So, Czech Aerospace Research Center has nice acronym in Czech, which is VZLU. Uh, this uh, research organization which was established more than 100 years ago uh, for aviation stuff, and we work uh, with space roughly 20 years. We have 200 employees, and we are based here in Prague and in Brno, both in Czech Republic. Uh, we are mainly, mainly working uh, as subcontractors for ESA, as you can see, but we also have our own missions. And one of these missions is VZLU SAT2. So this is a photo of the, of the satellite. It's a 3U CubeSat, uh, which means uh, size of a shoebox approximately. And at VZLU, uh, there were 28 people working on it, not only engineers, all the staff which was working on VZLU stuff, and about 70 external people, because there are six very nice and interesting scientific payloads on board from these external <coughs> institutions. Uh, today we will talk only about the Earth observation mission because uh, it's the one which uses the Linux computer, uh, so we can uh, talk about it and it's our primary mission, by the way. Uh, we have two cameras for that purpose, both cameras connected to the same computer. Uh, one camera is black and white with uh, high resolution, which means 25 uh, meters per one pixel, and the second one is color and it has a wide field of view. Uh, we have UHF radio, which is used for both for transmitting and receiving the data, and the key point is uh, attitude, deter determination, and control system, because it's a crucial part for Earth observation. We will talk about it uh, later. Uh, it requires quite a lot of sensors and actuators, so these are connected to the uh, attitude control system. Uh, we operate in a sun-synchronous orbit, which is nice for, uh, for Earth observation, uh, and it's on it's a low Earth orbit. Uh, and the last information from my side, uh, it's that the satellite was launched at the beginning of 2022, and it's still operating. And Martin will talk more about the details. Okay, thank you, Tomáš. Uh, as Tomáš mentioned, uh, we have uh, several uh, instruments on board. I will uh, briefly introduce them. Uh, we have uh, gamma ray burst detector, uh, time peaks detector, which is a uh, radiation detector uh, using uh, the same computer as our camera payload. So we have uh, two uh, identical computers on board, the Linux computers. Uh, then there is an uh, orbital monitor, which is uh, just uh, another uh, radiation monitor uh, in space, uh, but uh, the sensor was uh, developed uh, here in Czech Republic in, uh, in a faculty uh, of nuclear, nuclear science here in Prague. Uh, also, we have our own uh, developed uh, radiation detector, which is, uh, which is uh, called uh, SXD. Uh, so, yeah, radiation is uh, quite uh, quite uh, interesting thing in a space. So, <laughs> a lot of uh, radiation detectors there. Uh, all the instruments are interconnected uh, via a common uh, common bus. Uh, we use uh, CAN bus uh, as a physical layer uh, and uh, CubeSat space protocol, which is uh, mm, which adopted uh, some features from uh, TCP/IP. So it's a distributed, uh, it's a distributed uh, protocol. Uh, each instrument has its own uh, address, uh, 
and uh, we can we can share share them uh, via a common bus. We also use uh, two I 2 C uh, interfaces, uh, which are separated uh, for uh, for a connection with uh, with uh, our power system and uh, other payloads uh, like our uh, attitude control. Uh, the primary uh, mission objective uh, is uh, Earth observation, uh, and uh, not only Earth, but uh, uh, to take an image of the Czech Republic. That is that is the main goal. Uh, so uh, there are some requirements based on this uh, based on this goal, and uh, some uh, limitations, uh, which are ma which is mainly uh, the limited power budget. Uh, the total uh, income power is uh, no more than approximately three watts uh, uh, in average. And also, we have only UHF uh, radio, which uh, has a very limited uh, bandwidth, uh, up to 9.6 kilo kilobits per second. So the uh, the speed is uh, not very very high to upload and download all, all the scientific data uh, we are able to generate. Uh, also, the crucial part was uh, the delivery time. I mean the mm, uh, the, the total time uh, available for uh, for uh, the development of uh, of uh, of the hardware. Uh, it was uh, less than eight months. Uh, so uh, so the decision was to to use uh, Linux computer based on this uh, based on these uh, requirements and to connect uh, to connect the camera directly to the computer. Uh, with some uh, high resolution uh, uh, chip uh, and uh, and uh, provide all the uh, compression features and so on to uh, to use our uh, limited uh, link budget uh, finally we started cooperation with a small Czech company called l4 and uh, they developed uh, for us a computer uh, which is called vcvs2 computer uh, you can see it here on the picture. We have uh, two uh, identical computers, as I mentioned. Uh, one is used for our primary mission, uh, which is uh, which is Earth observation, Earth observation, and the second is to use uh, to uh, connect uh, the uh, X-ray detector connected to the USB 2. Uh, so that was the requirement on the second computer uh, to have the availability of the USB interface here. You can see the computers uh, uh, integrated in a, in a satellite, and this is an integration phase. You can see all the instruments here. Uh, the optical, this is the, the, this is the uh, optics of the, of the main camera. The GRB detectors here, uh, orbital monitor, radiation detector, and so on. This is our, this is our attitude control developed uh, in-house in, uh, in a VZLU. So this is our own har hardware. Yeah, uh, the main benefit uh, of the of the used uh, computer is uh, is that uh, uh, we directly or the L4 directly implemented uh, the, the, LV, the the driver to read out uh, camera data from the optical sensors using uh, LVDS. So the sensors, uh, each 1.3 megapixels, are directly connected uh, to the computer via LVDS channels, uh, and uh, and uh, the images are provided uh, via some API uh, directly to the user space. Uh, so we can we can simply uh, simply use uh, use the uh, images. Yeah. As uh, Lenka said, uh, uh, the space environment is not very friendly. Uh, quite critical uh, environment is, uh, is, uh, is the radiation. So it, uh, we should consider uh, we should consider this. Uh, there are at least two types uh, of the radiation. One is uh, cumulative, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, the radiation. Uh, tends to uh, tends to uh, degradate your uh, your uh, electronics uh, on board uh, during the time. Uh, typically, it leads uh, to to increase uh, significantly increase uh, the leakage uh, of the of the electronics and uh, possibly to to increase some uh, some misbehavior and so on. Uh, the good uh, the good mitigation technique uh, is to use uh, some aluminum shielding as uh, as shown here uh, on the picture this is our uh, camera 
shielded by, uh, by this uh, piece of aluminium. Uh, this is quite common technique uh, and also uh, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can do some, some testing of your uh, electronics uh, like we did on, on a VZLU uh, SAT2. This is our electronics uh, tested in a, in, a, in a laboratory in Austria, in Zybersdorf. Uh, cobalt 60 source, uh, so you can uh, uh, you, you can then uh, observe uh, the, the behavior during uh, during the uh, ionization. High energy protons uh, uh, might uh, call it also single event uh, effects uh, might uh, lead uh, to uh, soft errors. For instance, uh, single event upsets, which uh, typically uh, means uh, some bit flips in memory and so on. Uh, there might be some mitigation technique like uh, like to use uh, ECC memories uh, or some other logic uh, to, to prevent uh, uh, bit flips or at least detect uh, bit flips and, uh, for instance, uh, reset the device. Uh, quite serious uh, and uh, possibly uh, destructive or <laughs> Destructive, uh, destructive events uh, are, are uh, uh, for instance, single event uh, latch-ups, uh, which uh, leads uh, to, to perform uh, parasitic uh, terrestrial-like uh, structures uh, in uh, integrated circuit, uh, which leads to simply um, a short circuit. Uh, and. Uh, this uh, this should be uh, this should be handled by uh, uh, power reboot uh, in a in a very short time. So the good technique is to use uh, some latch up protections like uh, like fast circuit uh, breakers, uh, which we also implemented uh, directly on on a camera. Low pressure, uh, yeah, near uh, near vacuum in a in a uh, low Earth orbit. Uh, which means uh, uh, the gases uh, uh, are simply uh, liberated from uh, various uh, various types of the materials, and uh, uh, and uh, sh the the materials uh, materials like uh, some uh, common plastic and uh, and PVC and so on sh shall be uh, avoided. Uh, uh, as much as possible, uh, as uh, all these uh, all these uh, free gases uh, uh, might uh, might, uh, for instance, uh, 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 somehow uh, somehow regener regenerate uh, with with uh, with your uh, with your other surfaces uh, like uh, some sensors uh, sensor surfaces and so on. So you should use uh, uh, low outgassing materials, uh, uh, for instance, all the PCBs and so on uh, shall be cleaned. Uh, and uh, and uh, the good technique is uh, not to use uh, common plastics, uh, as I said. Uh, there is also uh, thin whiskers uh, issue, which tends to, to grow more in a, in a low pressure environment. Uh, the good technique is uh, to use uh, uh, thin lead materials or thin lead alloys uh, during during the assembly process. Uh, uh, which uh, which significantly uh, lower the uh, the probability of the of the thin whiskers uh, growing. Uh, thin whiskers uh, leads uh, to the to the short circuit, of course, for instance, uh, of the BGA uh, components. Uh, thermal cycling uh, during the orbit phase, uh, the temperature uh, vary from minus 40 to 50 degrees, uh, for instance. Uh, and so uh, we also provide some testing in-house. Uh, uh, we have a thermal vacuum chamber. You can see the uh, wall satellite here inside the chamber. Uh, 
this is a mostly temperature on on a surface of the of the uh, of the satellite uh, inside the satellite the temperature we can we can see that uh, it does not vary so much uh, there is a temperature about uh, from 5 to 10 degrees uh, during during the whole orbit so it's not such a critical but uh, some uh, materials like uh, like uh, pv panels and so on are exposed uh, to such a thermal cycling so you should consider also this and uh, and test if possible uh, the mechanical testing is also one of the crucial part uh, as uh, as uh, before you reach uh, the orbit uh, you would probably use uh, some uh, rocket and uh, the rocket is uh, is exposed to the to the random random <coughs> level of the uh, of the vibration you shall withstand uh, quite a high uh, g force uh, we have also our own facility to to provide such a testing uh, such a vibration test so then we are um, pretty sure that uh, our payloads uh, uh, withstand uh, the launch phase a cost component uh, uh, to use a COTS component in, in a such a small project uh, and a low budget project like, like uh, this uh, CubeSats uh, is uh, probably uh, the first choice. But of course, uh, this uh, leads to some, uh, uh, some risks as uh, these components are not qualified for space. Uh, the good starting point uh, would be to use uh, automotive grade uh, parts which uh, are qualified for some mechanical shocks and vibrations already and also had, uh, have uh, extended temperature, operating temperature range. So this is a good starting point to select uh, such a component. And of course, uh, to, to do some, uh, some uh, qualification testings uh, like uh, TID and so on is, uh, is of course uh, uh, beneficial. Yeah, that was uh, about the hardware. I will kindly ask Tomáš to continue with the software. Okay, so something about the BSP and the software. Uh, the whole BSP is built by Enclastra built environment, which is basically built root, which is some stuff around. Uh, the boot is quite simple. There is a predefined se a sequence which checks, uh, the, which verifies the checksums of the of the images and the first valid is uh, then booted by the u-boot uh, and i would like to mention that there is no supervisor so u-boot needs to take care of the boot there is no console in in u-boot so u-boot is really the responsible part for the booting of the of the linux computer uh, when the linux starts the root fs is in ram and the non-volatile memory is mounted only when it's needed by the script uh, regarding the debugging, uh, the satellite itself is uh, roughly 500 kilometers away only, but uh, it, it's quite difficult to reach, reach it. So we have no JTAG, we have no serial console. We can only debug by power cycling and shell over CubeSat space protocol. There is nothing more, so that's, that's quite, quite difficult from that, that point. This is, a, of course, this is mission specific. If your mission requires it, you may have serial console if it's implemented on your onboard computer. So it depends on the mission. As you can see, uh, simplicity is the key. Yeah, there, are no, there is no fancy stuff yet. We will see maybe after some tests. But as a starting point, the very simple, cool, uh, old, common stuff is used there. Uh, something about software, uh, as Martin said, we have uh, CAN as a uh, physical layer. We use socket CAN, of course, uh, on Linux. I'm uh, just mentioning it because it uh, because the socket API and the socket CAN was received very well by the programmers, programmers which were working on uh, microcontrollers because this API is really convenient and they were able to operate the CAN very quickly. Uh, on top of, of CAN, we use libcsp, which is the official library uh, for CubeSat space protocol. Uh, it may run on I2C, CAN, etc., but we, we use it only on, on CAN because the computer is connected only via CAN. For image compression, we simply use uh, OpenJPEG. And if you are interested, X-ray optical payload control software and, uh, and some parts of the BSP configuration for the respective computer are available on GitLab. The link is in the presentation. Uh, 
for the communication with the computer on board, we use VCOM, which is our terminal client, which uh, use CSP packets to, to communicate with the, <coughs> with the, uh, with the lib CSP on, on board of the computer. Uh, this terminal uh, will be soon, uh, hopefully soon published on, on, uh, Git, uh, on our GitHub. It's now being rewritten uh, for, uh, for our uh, partners. Uh, so we will publish it hopefully soon. Uh, I would like uh, to talk about uh, unplanned in-orbit upgrade because it's a nice uh, use case for Linux versatility. Uh, because after the launch, uh, one company, which is called Zytra, came to us and they said, okay, we would like to test our uh, artificial intelligence classifier in space. We would like to have flight heritage for our software. And we said, okay, it was not planned. There is no uh, update mechanism. Uh, we can just, just, just change the planners and, and scripts, but we will try. So uh, we uploaded the binary and run it on the camera computer. By the way, upload of 100 kilobytes required 10 passes with uh, 27 hours. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the best pass, uh, we, we uploaded 21 kilobytes during the best pass, so you can see that the UHF is really, really slow. Uh, and why, why to have cloud detection on board? Uh, you, can, you can see uh, the real situation on, uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the planet. This is the trajectory of, of the satellite. So it would be best to pick, automatically pick that, that part. And the detector was successful. It uh, really picked the part which is virtually, uh, literally without clouds. It's an uh, area near Greenland. It's taken from the angle, but yeah, it's, it was successful. So the classifier works. And we are moving to operation, which is Martin's part. Okay, uh, operation. Uh, you need some some ground station, some antenna to communicate with your satellite. Uh, we have our own ground station, which is uh, maintained uh, by uh, University of West Bohemia in uh, in a Pilsen. Uh, here, this is uh, this is uh, the antenna system on the roof uh, of the university. Uh, we have uh, quite a limited, uh, limited access time, uh, no more than one hour per day. Uh, so during that time, uh, we, have to, we have to check the satellite status. Uh, it means uh, to, to get, uh, get some telemetry data, uh, upload uh, some future plans uh, and plan, plan, plan the job uh, for the satellite and also download uh, the data available, uh, the, the scientific data, which, uh, which will be processed uh, later. Uh, so we tend to automate it, uh, these uh, processes as much as possible. Uh, for that purpose, uh, we have a uh, dashboard, uh, mm, which is uh, publicly available. You can, you, can, you can see the telemetry data on it. Uh, uh, we use also that uh, dashboard uh, to to plan the, the upload uh, uploading of the files uh, of, the, of the planners uh, to download to uh, to plan the download to download data and also uh, to uh, to commanding uh, our uh, our satellite. Uh, this is the this is the this is the automated uh, automated process. Uh, but of course. Uh, uh, the operator may access uh, the satellite also directly, manually. Uh, as uh, Tomáš uh, mentioned, we use uh, the VCOM utility, uh, which uh, simply encapsulates uh, the user commands uh, to the uh, CubeSat Space Protocol packets and, and vice versa. And this is how it uh, looks like. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a terminal with, uh, with a set of commands uh, you can you can execute and send uh, to the to the satellite uh, directly from the ground station uh, and get the reply of course uh, but this is uh, this is limited uh, to the to the access time over the uh, over the ground station during 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 the pass uh, over the ground station 
uh, what we do is uh, we can uh, we can execute the same set of the commands directly on on board on, on a satellite uh, in our onboard computer uh, so we can upload uh, simply such uh, such a planner file where you execute uh, the command directly in time so then you can generate your scientific data or start a measurement uh, uh, through uh, South Atlantic anomaly, typically for the radiation detectors and so on. Yeah. Uh, the satellite uh, itself also uh, drop uh, some basic telemetry data uh, every 10 seconds. Uh, we are uh, connected to the to the Satnox uh, network, uh, uh, which is which is a global uh, ground station network. Uh, so you can also uh, you can also uh, view such a dashboard uh, we created for our satellite uh, with, with uh, very very basic information like a temperature and uh, and uh, some radio statistics during the during the lifetime. Yeah. The observation uh, Earth observation. Uh, it means uh, you have to somehow somehow trigger trigger <laughs> the camera and uh, and the attitude control itself. Uh, how we do that? Uh, we have uh, we have our own uh, attitude uh, control hardware, uh, which was uh, as I as I mentioned, it was uh, it was uh, developed here in uh, VZLU. Uh, but there was no uh, control algorithm already uh, during the during the launch uh, ready to to be used uh, so uh, we as as a demonstration mission uh, we uh, we updated our algorithm in orbit during the regular operation uh, once you uh, once you build a camera and you and you put it on on the orbit uh, and you run uh, run the camera you take an image uh, you will probably see something like this uh, or uh, such uh, such an image uh, very nice images of of the earth but uh, uh, hardly recognize the Czech Republic here uh, it's it's really uh, uh, so so that is uh, that is not exactly what uh, what we want uh, in this case, uh, this attitude control is a uh, very, very uh, crucial part, and this is this is the most difficult part uh, on, on on the mission. Uh, so, what we did is uh, we implemented we uh, we embedded the micro Python to our uh, onboard computer. So it's uh, just uh, one of the thread running uh, running there. Uh, it's micro Python. So we then simply upload uh, the Python files uh, and. Uh, and make uh, the attitude control running and working. That's it, uh, and uh, seems to work. So we are happy. Uh, this is how we how we uh, how we start uh, our attitude control. We simply run a Python script. We have uh, we, we prepared a, a CubeSat uh, CSP uh, command for it. Uh, camera. As, as uh, Tomáš uh, Tomáš mentioned, uh, we did some experiment, uh, unexpected experiment with uh, with Zytra. So we uh, we have uh, we have implemented FTP-like service uh, encapsulated in a, in a CS, a CSP. So we can we can upload the files uh, files to the to the camera directly from the ground station. Uh, without uh, OBC to be involved, so the so the files are uploaded uh, through the radio via via common bus to the to the to the camera directly. Uh, also, we implemented uh, something like uh, remote shell uh, over CSP, uh, which uh, enables uh, the console access, the Linux uh, console access uh, directly. So we can uh, we can uh, we can run. Scripts. We can upload some script, uh, run it, and so on. Do some uh, optimization. Uh, this is a pretty good uh, feature. And uh, yeah, make make all the orchestration play, and uh, and then and then make uh, make a photo campaign uh, running, which means uh, to run uh, attitude control and and start uh, capturing. Uh, with all these things uh, ready, uh, we, pr uh, we generate some uh, ADCS uh, data 
which we uh, plan uh, to, to be downloaded. It, uh, the download itself to, might took one to two passes over the ground station, which results uh, to some report uh, from which we can easily, uh, easily check uh, if, uh, if the attitude control uh, was, uh, was done uh, as expected. Uh, here seems uh, you can see the, the uh, satellite trajectory, which is uh, the blue line, and then the, the, the green line is a uh, is a pointing direction. So you can see we we pointed uh, to the to the uh, nadir uh, nadir direction. Uh, what we do next uh, is uh, we we select image. We would like to to download to, to see some preview uh, how it looks like. Uh, it took uh, one pass to upload the planner I, I mentioned uh, before, and uh, to download uh, some uh, to download uh, raw thumbnail data, uh, which are uh, which are copied uh, from uh, from the camera to the to the onboard computer. Mm, as we download, uh, as we have uh, the main storage in uh, onboard computer, from which we then uh, download uh, s uh, data uh, as, 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 a, as a small small chunks. Uh, it it also took some passes, uh, typically one or two passes over the ground station. Uh, as a result, uh, we can we can get uh, JPEG image, uh, compressed image uh, with with a preview. If we are happy with uh, with such image and we we decide to download full image uh, full image data, uh, then uh, then we uh, also have to copy uh, the full image to the onboard computer, and then download uh, all the data to the to the ground station, which uh, might took uh, quite a lot passes over the ground station, uh, up to 40 passes. So we have precisely uh, select uh, the, the image to be downloaded, uh, at least uh, the full image uh, resolution. Yeah, but finally, we can, we can get something like that, which is, uh, which is uh, what we, what we uh, wanted to, to get. Uh, this means, this means uh, the mission was uh, successfully completed, uh, and, we, and we fulfill our, uh, our goals. Uh, that's, that's the result. And so we we now we are happy to produce another another uh, images, but uh, this is uh, this is our uh, our our output from from the from the our main output from uh, from our payload. Okay, uh, no more from my side. Uh, so I'll ask Tomasz to finish the session. Okay, so the last slide is about the conclusion and future plans. So as you anticipate, we plan to use uh, Linux in future missions uh, because as Martin said, all the goals were met and Linux is still working well in space in our particular use case. So it was a great success, I would say. Uh, there are many features really available which accelerated the development and we were really able to finish all the hardware and software in. Uh, eight months, which is, I would say, quite nice for the, for the space, mi space mission. Uh, we continue uh, with the development of the new computer. Uh, the new computer extends the functionality of the, of the old one. There are more interfaces. There is uh, a bigger storage, but not just a bigger EMMC. Uh, we are pre-selecting and we are qualifying SSD, which will be used in space. So the, the the, the storage will be uh, 100 times uh, bigger, hopefully. And we are implementing supervisor which will take care of the boot and it, it will help uh, the U-boot to switch to different memory or load the U-boot itself from a different memory to have more opportunities uh, and chances to survive uh, the mission. Uh, the basic bring up of the hardware is, uh, is done. And we also, co as, as, as was said in the previous uh, session, we cooperated Linux for, for space since the beginning, so we will run the, uh, the space distribution there. Okay, that's everything from our side. Uh, uh, thank you to the organizer, organi or, sorry, organizers. We were, uh, just final remark, uh, we, had, uh, we have an opportunity to present you the hardware, the space hardware, and uh, the model of Visitalusat uh, 2 tomorrow at poster session, which starts about 5.30, if I'm not mistaken. So we will be happy to chat about Linux, uh, Linux uh, space hardware, and general stuff if you want. So please come and we can, we can talk. So thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Okay, and the questions? <laughs> Yes, of course. Um, so was there anything that you had in your Linux distribution that you didn't use at launch, but that you found was handy, like when you, when you updated the, the software for the AI library or something? Uh, yeah, for me, for instance, uh, very handy uh, was uh, just some simple bash scripts. <laughs> very, very helpful uh, tool. So that that was uh, that was uh, something I heavily used uh, on Space. Yeah. You say it's possible to see the this, uh, default mode. Yes. Okay, uh, the question was uh, if it's possible to uh, to see that board tomorrow, yes, it will be possible. And I will repeat the first question, uh, were there anything handy on the Linux uh, uh, on, mm. on, in the, on Orbit? That was the first question. The answer, the answer to that is uh, third floor, uh, there's going to be uh, what's called the technical showcase. Oh, okay. So near the sponsor booth. Okay. So the question was uh, the question was if uh, we can get uh, more uh, more images uh, from our satellite uh, via some other uh, ground stations for instance uh, we have we are prepared uh, to drop also also uh, chunks of the, of the data uh, to the to the to the other ground stations like in a satnox network uh, it is it is not fully implemented it, it is it is ready to use but uh, uh, yeah it is it is not working like like we would like to to see it uh, so but it, it's ready for it there there is uh, there is uh, at least uh, room room for the improvement yeah, because this is this is really a bottleneck uh, to to get more and more images but even with uh, with uh, these uh, compressed data uh, uh, compressed images uh, we are able to to get uh, one image per per pass so so it's not 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 that bad but it's not full full image yeah, that's right Yes, we. Uh, first of all, uh, the question was if we see reboots in orbit. Yes, yes, we do. Uh, first of all, we were testing uh, the protons and uh, these this kinds of stuff on the ground, and yes, we saw reboots caused by by radiation. And yes, there are some reboots, but we are not tracking it. We are tracking the reboots of OBC. This is part of the Satnox telemetry, so you can see. There is a, a number of reboots and the cause of the last reboot, so you can check uh, online. And uh, I'm not sure if you really, uh, if you uh, see the reboot of the computer during the pass. The reboot of the of the onboard computer. The question is if uh, this is caused by uh, by the radiation or software itself. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> there is a lot of budget. Uh, yeah, but uh, <laughs> to be honest, uh, the camera is operated uh, in a uh, in some uh, very short duty cycle. So we, we we switch on the camera or the power to the camera only during the the, the photo uh, campaign. So for a few minutes to say, and then we uh, the power of. Also, also uh, as, I, as, I, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, limited uh, power income, so we are not able to keep uh, the camera running uh, during uh, the wall orbit. So, could you could you repeat the question? Sir? Do you have a feeling for what the average time between reboots is? For Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, the question was uh, if yeah. you know the time between reboots. Yes, you can uh, ch check the Satnox dash dashboard because th that graph is not uh, that plot is not here on the screenshot, but down the, on on the bottom part of the page there is a cumulative amount of free OBC reboots. You can see the number there. It's about there is a there is a number reboots. and the cause of the last reboot and there is a plot on the bottom of the page, so you can see the reboots uh, in the time. As, 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 as you may anticipate, uh, there were a lot of reboots uh, during the commissioning phase, <laughs> because there were a lot of tests, there were some problems, let's say. And after that, uh, the, 
the, the number of reboots uh, was stabilized and it's quite steady now. Usually, usually there are um, two, up to three reboots per month, no more. So yeah, you can like see that. it's yeah, it's now it's we are operating uh, 500 days roughly, 500 days, and you can see we one, have yeah. 135 reboots now yeah. of the OBC. This is not Linux computer. To to make it clear, this is uh, uh, the control computer. This is not the payload computer. Uh, which memory? The question is uh, which kind of memory we are using. Uh, there is QSPI memory, which is directly on the COTS module, and there is and uh, the Linux image is stored there. If I'm just not mistaken. And there is EMMC, four gigabytes EMMC, which is used for data. No, it's just, there is just aluminum on top of it, and it protects the, the memory. Uh, but uh, the, the, it's, uh, the EMMC is automotive grade, uh, the best grade of automotive. Uh, and it was pre-selected. Uh, the, the EMMC memory was pre-selected in tests, so we are pretty sure that it will survive two years on orbit. It was, uh, it was, I was just, uh, uh, I was just, uh, at, uh, it was uh, uh, tested on a TRD uh, and uh, also what we did is, uh, it's a BGA uh, component and we re the GBA, so we replaced yeah. uh, the pure tin with uh, tin lead uh, uh, alloy. Okay, so we are sorry, uh, there is a stop sign, ah, okay. wing, wing quite a lot, so we have to stop. We can continue in chat, uh, so, okay. <laughs>